the reason I'm still doing it to this day is one of those uh, young uh, adults, she was a freshman, she read 30 books in 30 days. Now, I just want to context this, like read, not skim or scan. She read 30 books in 30 days. And I'm always fascinated why some people act on what they know because common sense is not common practice because I knew exactly how she did it. I taught her, right? But I wanted to know why. I'm always curious like what the drive was, just like with that list, it was it was tell my parents, right? And then she'd make them proud. And her, I found out her mother was dying of terminal cancer, was given only two months, 60 days to live. And the books she was reading were books to save her mom's life. Now, I wished her luck, prayers. Six months goes by, I don't hear from this young lady. And one day uh, my phone rings and it's this young lady and she's crying profusely, uh, like for a long time. And when she finally stops, I realize there are tears of joy that her mother not only survived, but is really getting better. The doctors don't know how or why, the doctors were calling it a miracle, but her mother attributed 100% to the great advice she got from her daughter who got it from all these books. And in that moment, I realized that if knowledge is power, then learning is our superpower. And it's a superpower we all have. We just weren't, weren't taught, they were in classes. And the other thing Jason, I realized was, was my mission, right? Hearing that, you know, in terms of the, the, the results that she got, you know, helping her mom, I was like, I, have, I wanna get this out to, to more people and to the world. And, um, and I've been doing it ever since. I started teaching at various colleges and lecturing at places. And eventually these kids were getting such stellar grades that the parents took note and they invited me to speak at their, you know, business, uh, like whether it's a law firm or insurance company, a financial firm. And I started doing this corporate, corporate training. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's where I began. Jim, I have guests who come on the show that are filled with so much wisdom that I do not dare interrupt because what you've shared there contains so much richness. And there's a couple of things I wanted to extract from it. Um, one of them is just your, your ability to be the perfect person to teach. And I, I wanna connect that to the fact that I was, I was very shocked when I, when I first met my partner, she, uh, she's Russian and she was actually an English teacher. And I was very surprised, I was like, wait, why would you be teaching English? You're not even an English native. And she's like, do you know how much it's easier to be able to teach English? The fact that I had to learn it as an adult because yeah. it didn't come easy to me. And as an English native, you don't understand the nuances of understanding how do you explain to someone how to say and spell yacht. And I'm like, oh yeah, good point, right? And yeah. to me, that makes me realize like why you having had that history made you the perfect teacher that you are now because you could understand and empathize with the struggles that someone would have in the way that they need to educate and learn. And I find that fascinating for a lot of people who are getting into their own practice, building their own business and kind of comparing themselves thinking like, oh, but I'm inadequate. Oh, I haven't figured it all out. Yeah. I'm not the best in the world doing this. So who am I to even speak a word of teaching someone else? Is that something you faced in your journey as well? It, it did. Um, you know, just I, I mentioned that I feel like we're best suited to support and serve the person we once were. And I feel like it made me a better coach and teacher because I know what students on an extreme side were, were going through, the insecurities, the doubt, the capabilities. And, um, you know, our, our mission is to build better, brighter brains, right? No brain left behind. We can create a a brighter world by creating better brains. Because I believe you change your brain, you change your life, you change your brain, you change the the world. And so in our mission is to reach 1 billion minds. I know it's very grand, but you know, the first person I had to help was, was myself, right? I was client number one. You have to be a product of your product. And, um, and so my conviction was, is so, so very strong, but anyone who's going through doubt and, you know, these kind of challenges, I, you know, I understand, but I want to remind everybody that all, that all, all big things had small beginnings, right? Every professional was once an amateur and every expert was once a beginner, but little by little, a little becomes a lot. 
And, 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 you know, I had to start before I was ready because uh, it's never a perfect time to do anything. It's never a perfect time to get married or to have kids or to go to, you know, university. But I feel like the universe rewards courage. You know, there is this uh, movie that I saw recently. It's an older movie, but I was just not really paying attention. It was just in the background because other people were watching. It was with Matt Damon. I, th I think it's called We Bought a Zoo. And, but there was this quote that stood out that I heard just in passing that, you know, 20 seconds of insane courage, you know, can make such a big difference. And, and I, and I would just want to just maybe, I don't know who I'm speaking to at this point, but if you're on the fence and you're doubtful, you don't have to have everything perfect in order to be able to help somebody else. You know, whether you are an entrepreneur or a coach or you want to write a book or you want to speak or you want to do any kind of service, it's just, you know, offering real value from a place of, 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 in, of integrity. And if you know a little bit more about something than somebody else, then you could be a great asset to them. I love that. I, I have to make the, the bridge to that comment, which is especially for those who have resistance in sales. I mean, you're on the Selling with Love podcast. And for those who are listening here, I know they have the intentions in the right place. They're trying to do their best and they want to give more. And I think that 20 seconds might look at to the fact when they're like, you're talking to someone, you know, you can help them. It, it's like a 20 seconds of you just authentically telling them like, you need to become my client right now because I know the transformation. And that- yeah when you have that kind of click moment is often if I'm, as you said that I start reminiscing on all my best sales and all the best clients I've ever worked with. And it came from that moment of that courage where I said, like, I'm going to take a chance because I'm pretty damn sure I can truly help this person. And when you come from that yeah. energy, I think the business starts going in a way better direction and you start attracting the kinds of clients you want to work with. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling with Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.